Hi guys, this is an exciting Saturday night on the coast of Mendocino County, California here on a uh, few minutes left in the night of July 25th, 2015 and uh, <clears throat> I've been thinking about trying to work up around about this new issue of Rolling Stone magazine with Kim Kardashian on the cover but uh, that, that's below my contempt, and so I decided instead I'm, I'm actually going to uh, look over to Rolling Stone's competition, Esquire magazine, and I'm going to tip my hat to good old Esquire magazine for this story out in uh, its present issue. Don't have the magazine in front of me, so I just went on their... Uh, their website, good for Esquire, uh, their story, When the End of Human Civilization is Your Day Job, Among Many Climate Scientists, Gloom Has Set In. Things are worse than we think, but they just can't really talk about it. And uh, this is a picture of this climate scientist looking at these uh, at the melting glaciers up in Greenland and taking all these methane readings did a rant about this guy uh, last year causing all these ways this climatologist Jason Box that's him somewhere in the glacier there uh, with his famous quote talking about methane release in the Arctic and his uh, his scientific appraisal of the situation facing planet Earth in the 21st century is, quote, we're fucked. We're fucked. There you go. And so they start out, so what the article is about uh, is just, you know, well, is is far ranging. What it talks about is lo a lot is is climate burnout and the depression and mental problems that more and more climatologists are are having as they struggle with as they as they understand that we're fucked. Uh, you, you know. And it talks a lot about that. And starting there, that's Jason Box, uh, my hero, Jason Box, my doomsday prophet climatologist, buddy. You go, brother. Hallelujah. But what I really liked, I'm going to put the, uh, the link to this excellent story and encourage you to read it. Uh, look at that glacier breaking up. Good Lord. That's the Humboldt Glacier. Uh, it was... <coughs> that's, I just want to read a little bit, uh, and then I want to read you from this interview with this other climate scientist. They also have a long... They have a long interview with this Jason Box and Michael Mann, but it's this other guy. Uh, I just want to... He just kind of sums up the situation, the writer. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't credit him. For more than 30 years, climate scientists have been living a surreal existence. A vast and ever-growing body of research shows that warming is tracking the rise of greenhouse gases exactly as their models predicted. The physical evidence becomes more dramatic every year. Forests retreating, animals moving north, glaciers melting, wildfire seasons getting longer, higher rates of droughts and floods. And don't forget the storms, five times as many in the 2000s as in the 1970s. Uh, anyway, uh, we're, we're screwed. Uh, let's see. Arctic air temperatures are increasing at twice the rate of the rest of the world study by the US Navy saying the Arctic could lose its summer sea ice as early as next year 84 years ahead of the models evidence a little more than a year old suggests the West Antarctic ice sheet is doomed 
which will add between 20 and 25 feet to ocean levels. The 100 million people in Bangladesh will need another place to live, and coastal cities globally will be forced to relocate. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, this is Michael Mann. Uh, I like their uh, description of this guy. No scientist has come in for more threats and abuse than Michael Mann, whose hockey stick graph uh, has become the target of the most powerful climate deniers in the world, showing temperature and emission lines for recent decades curving straight up. And among climate activists, gloom is building uh, they interview some shrinks. Um, uh, most of the dozens of scientists and activists I spoke to today, the rise of the melancholy mood to the failure of the 2009 climate conference, and it's gonna that's gonna happen again. And talking about James Lovelock, Bill McKibben, Clive Hamilton. Um, anyway, oh, here's Deep Green Resistance getting a nod. At the darkest end of the spectrum are groups like Deep Green Resistance, hallelujah, which openly advocates sabotage to industrial infrastructure and the thousands who visit the website and attend the speeches speeches of my old buddy Guy McPherson showing up here in Esquire magazine. Uh, quoting Guy, There is no escaping the trap. We have landed ourselves into talking about I've mentioned this guy Paul Kings North he's another guy um, talking about hope quote you have to be careful about hope if that hope is based on an unrealistic foundation it just crumbles and then you end up with people who are despairing I saw that in Copenhagen. There was a lot of despair and giving up after that. Well, wait till this this year. Um, so you can count him as someone who's thrown in the towel pretty much. Uh, and this guy, this is one that this Gavin Schmidt guy. All right, so this guy is a climatologist. He's a breeder also. Uh, so th this is so what they're pointing out here, and, and this dude, they're pointing out not climate change deniers, but climatologist deniers that are still deluding themselves that there's something we can do to turn this freight train around, well, other than... Uh, depopulate the planet by 90%, of course. Uh, so anyway, they interview this guy, and and uh, my friends were insisting that this was a joke, that he would, but I don't think so. Um, let's see. Uh, he now... F focuses relentlessly on the bright side on the bright side so this is a climatologist this is in uh this interview with this gavin schmidt in the middle of this long story quote it's not that nothing has been done there's a lot of things in terms of per capita emissions most of the developed world is stable so we are doing something and then referring to box's tweet that i did this rant on a year ago about we're fucked over methane this methane release uh quote 
I don't agree. I don't think we're fucked. There is time to build sustainable solutions to a lot of these things. You don't have to close down all the coal-powered stations tomorrow. You can transition. It sounds cute to say, oh, we're fucked and there's nothing we can do, but that's a bit of a nihilistic attitude. We always have choice. We can continue to make worse decisions, or we can try to make even better ones. Oh, we're fucked. Just give up now. Just kill me now. That's just stupid. <clears throat> Smith, who is expecting his first child, uh, shrugs off the abrupt climate change scenarios. And this, I, 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 I absolutely uh, love this. And, and I know the writer was having fun here, quoting this, quoting this scientist thing about what his opinion of methane leaks are. Quote, <clears throat> The methane thing is actually something I work on a lot, and most of the headlines are crap. There is, guys, I can't make up a quote like this. There is no actual evidence that anything dramatically different is going on in the Arctic other than the fact that it is melting pretty much everywhere. Okay. Let's see. Uh... So, when the, uh, when, when the reporter mentions pretty much the, uh, the hopelessness of this joke two degrees Celsius scenario under this, this clearly business is, as usual model, uh, this is, this, this is Gavin's response to that, that whole business. Uh, oh yeah. The business as usual model that that we project is really a totally different planet. There's going to be huge dislocations if that comes about. Yep, and the glaciers. This is this, this optim. This is an optimistic climatologist, and the glaciers quote, the glaciers are going to melt, they're all going to melt. But my reaction to Jason Box's comments, meaning comments on all the glaciers melting, is, what is the point of saying that? It doesn't help anybody. Yep. Um... So then we're talking about uh, sea level rise and what this means to climate refugees. This is continuing. Uh, quote, particularly in the Indian subcontinent, that is a real issue. There is going to be dislocation there, no question. And the reporter, and the rising oceans, Bangladesh is almost underwater now. Do a hundred million people have to move? Answer. Well, yeah, <clears throat> under business as usual, but I don't think we're fucked. The reporter, like, resource wars, starvation, mass migrations, uh, response. Bad things are going to happen. What can you do as a person? You, meaning talking to the reporter, you write stories, I do science. You don't run around saying, we're fucked, we're fucked, we're fucked. It doesn't incentivize anybody to do anything. There you go, and this was by... Uh, 
it would be been real nice if they had given the authors oh john h richardson and I, i'm kind of embarrassed to admit i overheard this story on npr news uh, a couple of nights ago which gave me the idea for this and um the npr reporter was asking john now john is a psychologist that they were interviewing talking about the increasing despair of doomsday prophet climatologist and john suggested to the npr audience that one thing they could do is spend time on facebook spend time on facebook there you go and with that I am going to say, yes, Virginia, we are fucked. <coughs> and then I'm going to go sit in Darth Vader, my massage chair, because it is midnight on a Saturday night, and i got to get up on a ladder tomorrow. Bye, guys. I'll put the link to this article. Read it.